Hi all, Martin of Flicking Feathers again today and I'm tying this wee Fox Squirrel Crayfish. Um, it's a great wee pattern for smallmouth. Carpal eat it as well in some fisheries, um, but it's a, it's a good bass fly. It's based on um, a pattern that my mate Charles, who I fish with here, um, uses quite a lot in the in the spring. Um, certainly, certainly a good taker of fish and worth having in your box. As always, I'll put a materials list in the description, along with a link to the Patreon page for anyone that wants to support the channel. Get access to the members only content and be eligible for the giveaways. You can also subscribe, hit the bell button so you get notified of the new videos. That's all appreciate it. So, the hooking device is a size 6 TMCO uh, 708, it's the keeled hooks, like a wee sort of jig style hook. And I've run on some uni and camel. Any kind of tanny brown tread will do you really. I'm going to start some, these are small lead eyes, but you could obviously make them bigger or use bigger or smaller eyes to suit where you're fishing. Um, I'll certainly be tying them with a medium as well, I would say, for me. And I'm just getting the eyes fitted securely. Making sure everything's sitting as it should. I'm going to run my thread back to just past the barb. I'm going to get a, a bunch of fox squirrel tail. Right, um, I mean, you could, you could, I suppose, tie this with a like, grey squirrel dyed or, I mean, not even necessarily this colour, you could have it dyed olive if you want it. Taking off a reasonable bunch. Um, is that maybe a quarter of a pencil, I suppose? A third of a pencil. And don't stack the hair, let it be tapered. Length of this, I want it basically, length of the hook, maybe a wee hair more. I'll take two wraps, and I'm just going to press out my thumbnail to spread it. Just make sure I get all around the shank. I'll take another few wraps to secure it. Trim that at an angle. Right, the squirrel tail is very hard here. It won't compress. It's a good idea to trim it at an angle as best you can, um, so that the thread oops, makes contact with a greater number of the individual fibres. And I'm brushing some super glue onto my thread now. It's sort of gooping up on me a wee bit, this bottle's just about done. And then I'll take that wet glued thread right down. I'll come back up. I'll grab my needle because I've got a bit of excess here and I'll just Take it right back on all the thread wraps, but not onto the hair itself. Get a wee run onto the dumbbells. That's fine. And now, and now that the the thread's been up and in the shank, I've got there's a lot more friction with the hook and a lot more grip. So I always like to come in and do an extra set of wraps around the eyes as this really really fixes them in place right I mean I'm sure you could take a pair of pliers and 
move them. But you're not going to do that, you know. In a fishing situation, that same as solid as you can be. I'm just touching that to take away any excess glue. And then I'll get my dubbing. I'm just using crawdub um, and tan. I should say the dumbbells I'm using are these, the double pupil ones um, and the fluorescent orange. I like a wee hot spot of fluorescence, but you know, I don't really care about the the pupil as such. Just dubbing this on. And you can be fairly, fairly heavy with the dubbing. You want it to be sort of bulbous so you get a sort of flaring effect when you tie the next bunch of squirrel tail in. So I'm inverting the hook. Um, obviously if you don't have a rotary you'll just need to take the hook out of the vise and turn it. I'm going to take another bunch of squirrel, about the same size. Taking out any of the short broken hairs or rubbish in the under fur. Got to sort of hold it flat. Right. Look, when I tie it in, I'm not going to pinch it in this way, I'm going to pinch it in like this. So that it sort of wants to spread fairly even. So you get it, offer it up, and you want the length to be like halfway into the tail. Just gather that in. You can see it's trying to spread already, although it's, it's a wee bit squint. And I'm just going to press it to encourage it around the top half of the fly. She wraps back to push it against the dubbing. See how you're sitting. That looks okay to me. So I'll come in, trim it at an angle again. You don't need to be super fussy. I've got some fibres that have sort of gripped into the wet glue. I'm quite happy for that to happen. Um, it's obviously they've not got to slip. Bit more glue on my thread and wind it into that squirrel. If you don't like glue, I mean, I don't know what to tell you, that's your concern. Um, I suppose you could use varnish, but varnish is not adhesive. Now, you know, this is just a way of making your fly more durable. Get some more of the same dubbing. Build a thick noodle. I've built it in layers there so that it won't dog leg. Um, sometimes if you try to put on too much dubbing in one go, it won't actually grip the thread. So I went for a thin layer and then I did another sort of layer over the top and thickened up the noodle. Again, don't be shy with your dubbing, let it, let it be quite heavy. It's just a wee bit tangled up somehow and it's annoying me. Um, this brush will sort it, there we go. 
It just made me, I kept thinking the, the wing was no sitting properly, but it actually is fine, just because the hair was tangled. Third wing, or well, second wing, I suppose, after the, the tail and the, the mid body. Similar size bunch. Same as before, like halfway back into the previous. Tie it off. At this stage, if you, I'm a bit sh the long longer hairs have all went to one side, so I'm just pulling on my side to sort of even them up. Get that in. Trim that here at an angle about halfway across the dumbbell eye because I'm going to figure eight across with the glue thread and catch it. Have a wee look. Just got to free any that are trapped around the hook there. That's fine. And you can see you've got a wee sort of tapering profile, just a buggy looking thing that's going to be crawling along the bottom. Take a rubber leg. Use whatever you like. This is just the pumpkin with the orange tip, silly leg. Um, I would say silicon's better because um, it floats. The only reason I add these is so that when the fly's at rest, it's doing something. Uh, you know, these will kind of float up off the off the back of the wing and move about in any current. I've got a single leg. I've cut it in half. I'm going to offer it in with the orange tips to the back and I'll let them come like halfway into the tail. Take two or three wraps to secure. And then I'll make a dubbing loop. Now it's sort of up to you what you do with the legs. Um, I've got another crayfish pattern that I, I like to use as well, and I leave a tie legs like this at the at the front, and I leave them sticking forward. Um, I mean they never tangle up or anything, and it catches a lot of fish as well. I think it's just an extra bit of movement. On this pattern, I prefer to fold them back, but as I say, up to you really. You could leave them in this sort of. X shape so that you get a bit more exaggerated movement. Entirely up to you. So the sometimes I like a darker head. Um but there's one there. I've tied I've put a slightly darker head on it. But I think I'll just stick to the tan, tan on this one. I mean, I don't think it actually makes any great deal of difference as long as it's the general overall tone is suitable for where you're fishing. I'm just going to load up this loop. I've got plenty of dubbing in. I'd rather have too big a loop than too small. 
uh, because you don't have a lot of space left to really be tying this off. Get my spinner in. Twist this up. Basically, I've got to, if there's any stuff that's sort of bunched up a bit too thickly, I'm just going to come in and sort of pull it a wee bit, take out the extra stuff that's no gripping the thread, and just keep spinning. This is going to be an incredibly, it's going to be nice and tight, right? I hate seeing folk make their dubbing loops and they're still loose. Right. You've got to be able to pull the hair, pull the dubbing like that, right? And it's uh, it stays in. So now that I'm in, get that started, and then I'm going to take a few wraps here, just to create a bit of separation between the two pairs of legs. And I'll lift these. Take a wrap in front and another until they just start to cock back. That's fine. And then I'm just going to figure eight through the dumbbells once. It takes me nicely to the end of my dubbin loop, which I'll catch off. And as I don't have a long tie in, I'll be take it around the thread and catch it in and sweep it back just to be nice and secure. Even when I trim the end, I'll just leave it a wee bit long, it gets lost in the dubbing anyway. And I'll hit finish. Two on these bottom bouncing flies. Grab my Velcro, get a wee, oops, get a wee scrub. And then I like to just trim the second set of legs so they're a wee bit shorter um, than the pair before. Maybe sort of to the back of the hook or slightly beyond. This is just encourages them to move independently. There you go, that's the wee uh, fox squirrel crayfish. Great wee fly. Um, okay, just get some varnish on the wraps. Don't worry if it goes into the dubbing on the underside. Great wee fly for the bass. As I say, on some fisheries, it's you'll get carp that will take a fly as big as this as well. I mean, it could be a crayfish, it could be a goby whatever. So I hope that was useful, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please remember to give me a thumbs up below and subscribe to the channel. Tight lines guys, bye.